Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 14th December 2021. And right now, I am with the 11 Cambridge class. Today, uh, we are studying the subject uh, Physics 5054. It's Cambridge O Levels uh, Physics. And today, we have set our heart to solve uh, a, a paper on alternative to practical. We call it ATP. Today we have selected May, June, 2019, Physics 5054, paper 4.1. This ATP paper belongs from the zone one. The time allowed for this paper is one hour and the marks it carries is 30. Okay, so let's start uh, this paper. So let me show you the question paper. Okay. So May, June 2019, four one paper, alternative to practical. Okay, so the first question coming up. A student investigates how the resistance of a light dependent resistor, LDR, depends on the brightness of light. He uses a lamp to vary the brightness of light on the LDR. The LDR is mounted on a wooden block so that it is a distance L above the bench. The lamp is placed directly above the LDR at a distance H above the bench as shown in the figure. Okay, so this is that figure. So the, the LDR from here to here, that's the height of the LDR from the bench. And this is the height of the filament. This is the filament in the lamp. This is the height of the filament from the bench, H, and this is L. On the figure 1.1, measure the distance L and H. Okay, so let me show you. Okay. So put a scale here and from here, till this point. From this point till this point, measure the length L. This is the height of the LDR from the bench. And with the help of the scale, measure from here till here. Put a scale here and measure this value H. I have measured it. Let me show you my readings. Okay. So the L value will be 3.2 centimeter and the H value will be eight centimeter. When you will measure, if you have a photocopy of this paper, uh, your reading will be little shorter than these values. But when you will solve this paper on CIE paper, then the readings will be exact. But because when you are using a photocopy, the, the diagrams are little, they get shrink a little bit. So your readings will be like 3.0 centimeter, but the actual reading is 3.2 centimeters. Your reading might be 7.5, 7.8 centimeter, but the actual reading is eight centimeter. That happens due to the photocopy, it's not your fault. Okay, then the question is calculate the distance D from the lamp to the LDR, okay. So from we have to measure the distance D from the lamp to the LDR. D is this distance, okay? From this point, put a scale here. If you have a hard copy of the paper, put a scale here. And measure how much is this length? Very simple. So I have measured it, and this is approximately 4.8 centimeters. 4.8 centimeters. Then he says the student uses a ruler to measure H. Suggest one difficulty that the student has when making this measurement. Okay, so uh, I can show you when you are measuring H. When you are measuring H, one difficulty will be uh, you have to keep the scale vertical. It's very important that the scale must remain vertical to this bench. So then you will get the exact height of this filament. 
Another difficulty is this filament is inside the lamp, but you will be measuring a little distance away from the, so you will be, uh, your scale is not touching the filament, okay? So it's a little difficult. So the one difficulty is that the vertical and the scale must be vertical, okay? So it's a one mark question. Let me show you my answer. The answer which I wrote is question number one A and this third part will be, I wrote a ruler must be kept vertical. That's a little difficult thing. If you want to keep that ruler vertical. Okay, so let's go back to the question. He says figure uh, 1.2. Figure 1.2 shows some of the apparatus used in this experiment. So here is a cell battery. Here we have an ammeter. Here we have an LDR. And parallel to the LDR, we have a voltmeter. So in the space below, draw a circuit diagram for this apparatus. It's a two mark question. So we have to draw a circuit diagram for this. It's a two, two marks question. We have to draw a circuit diagram for this apparatus. So I will draw, a, you see, I will draw a, a cell, then an ammeter, then a LDR, then back to the cell. And here parallel to this LDR, I will put a voltmeter. Let me show you. Let me show you my answer. Okay. So here we have a cell. Here we have an ammeter. Here we have an LDR. LDR is the a rectangle, and in the rectangle we draw a line. Okay. So um, okay. So. Um, here we have the cell, here we have an ammeter, then this is the symbol for the LDR, it's a resistor, and you show these arrows, they represent the light. So this is the symbol for the LDR, and across this LDR, we will put a voltmeter, voltmeter is connected parallel, parallel to the LDR, and here you came back to the negative terminal of the battery. So this is how you represent this on a, on, 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 the, on the circuit diagram. So I hope that you can understand. This is cell, this is ammeter, this is LDR, this is voltmeter. Okay. Here we have the second part. Figure 1.3 shows the readings of a voltage V across the LDR and the current I in the circuit when the lamp is at the distance D above the LDR calculated in the A second part. So here you have a voltmeter. So you can see that there, what is the reading? This is six, this is seven. So 6.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the reading is 6.5 volt. So here you will write 6.5 volt. Record the readings V and I. So if you look at this, it's a ammeter and it's giving the reading in milliampere. So it will be 60, 65, 70, 75, 76, 78. So, uh, no, sorry. Seven, this is 70, 7, 7 77, 75. 77. So the reading is 77, 77 milliamperes. The reading is 77 milliampere. Okay. So let me show you the whole thing. So this is 77 milliampere. Okay. Then the question is the resistance R of the LDR for this lamp position uh, is calculated using the equation R is equals to V by I. Calculate the R giving your answer to two significant figures within with unit. 
So put the value of the V, whatever the value of V you have here, put the value of the I, but you have to convert this into amperes. And then you will enter the values in the calculator and you will be able to find the R value. So let me show you. Okay, so the V value is 6.5 volt and the I value is 77 milliampere. Milli means 10 raised to the power minus three. The resistance R of the LDR for this lamp position is calculated using the equation R is equals to V by I. So we will have R equals to 6.5 divided by 77 expo minus three. So when you will enter these values in your calculator, so you will have 84.4, so approximately 84 ohms. So the resistance is 84 ohm, 84 ohm. Okay, so after that we have uh, this, we are done with this thing. Okay. C part, the student repeats the experiment for different values of D. The results are shown in the table 1.1. The D value was, how much was the D value? We just calculated. You enter the D value here and the I value here. Let me show you. Okay. So the value of the D was 4.8 and the value of the I was 77 milliampere, 4.8 and 77 milliampere. Okay. So complete the 4.8 4 and 77. Then he says, use the readings taken in the A second part and the B second part to complete the top row of the table 1.1. On the grid in the figure uh, 1.4, plot the graph of uh, I uh, milliamperes on the y-axis against D in centimeters on the x-axis. Start your axis from 0, 0, draw the smooth curve of the best fit. So this is that graph, it's a four mark question. We have to plot these points, this is x-value, these are y-values, we have to plot them. Okay, let me show you my work. D value goes from 4.8 to 35, and the I values are from 10 to 77. Okay, so you can see here I have labeled the greatest D in centimeters on the x axis, I in milliamperes on the y axis. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Here we have represented 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Okay, then I will plot those points and this, this is that table, this is X value, this is Y value. At 4.8, the reading is 77. Okay, so let me, let me, I have that written paper, so from there I can, I can read the paper. So how that those for at 4.8, at 4.8 the reading is 77. So 4.8 reading is 77. At 7 the reading is 43. At 11.1 .1, the reading is 28. And at uh, 19 the reading is 16. I value 16. At uh, 26. 26.8, the reading is 12. And at 35, the reading is 10. So you see, uh, this is how I have plotted those points. Then they ask us to draw the line, uh, the curve of bass fit. So I have tried to draw the curve of bass fit. So you see, this should have gone from little here. Here, you can go from here. Okay. So this point will be above the curve and this point will be below the curve and the curve will be very smooth. So you can draw the curve of best fit, okay? So that was for Mark. The next question is, their question is, let me read the question from the paper and then we will see. 
He says that the voltage V is constant throughout suggests how the resistance R of the LDR varies with the D. Okay, if you look at this graph carefully, as the value of the D is increasing, the value of the the value of the I is decreasing. As the value of the D is increasing, the value of the I is dropping, it's decreasing, which means that the resistance is increasing. So it means that as the D increases, the R increases, okay? So as the D increases, the R increases. So by this question, uh, we are done with the question number one. So uh, before I go to the uh, marking scheme, let me show you one thing. So here you have a lamp, here we have the LDR light dependent resistor. This is on a bench. So what we will do, we will change this height. So this distance between the lamp filament and the LDR will change. And by changing this distance, we are able to, uh, we are calculating how much is the current flowing through the LDR. And by doing this, we have made a conclusion about the resistance of the LDR. And we have found that as the D increases, the resistance of the LDR also increases. So this was question number one. The whole of the question has been done. We are done with the question number one. Okay, so now we are going to question number two. But before we go to the question number two, let me show you the marking scheme, okay? So, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is question number one and it's marking scheme. And I suggest you that you stop this video and you take your time to read all the answers, their marks. And so, so, so um, I always tell you that uh, whenever you solve a question of physics, always check it, compare it with the marking scheme. It's very, very important. So we are done with question number one. So let's go to the question number two. He says, a student investigates the speed of sound V in air using an oscilloscope. He uses the apparatus shown in the figure 2.1. So here we have placed two mics and we know the distance between these mics. This is mic, no, mic A, this is mic B. And both of them, they are connected to an oscilloscope. So oscilloscope will make, uh, if they will catch sound, for example, the mic A will catch the sound, the oscilloscope will make a wave uh, on its display and of the sound. And when the mic B will receive the sound, it will also make the, the wave of that sound. So that student has a balloon is in his hand. He also has a pin in his hand. So what with the pin, he will uh, prick the balloon and the balloon will pop. So the balloon and the two microphones are in a straight line. The student uses a pin to burst the balloon, creating a loud sound, loud sound. The sound is detected first by the microphone at A and then by the microphone at B. The corresponding traces on the screen of the oscilloscope are shown. So, so this is the trace uh, when the balloon burst, and the, this is the trace of the sound when the sound was detected by the microphone A, and this is the sound, uh, the trace of the sound when the sound of that, that uh, burst was recorded by the microphone B, and we know the distance between them. So very easily I can find the speed of the sound. Here, uh, this one square, that is one division, okay? So he says, uh, the time base on the oscilloscope is set at 0 0.50 millisecond per division. You know, time base means the scale which is used on the x-axis. So on this scale, so uh, one uh, division on the x-axis basically represents 0 0.5 milliseconds. So this one square represents 0 0.5 seconds. So their question is uh, using figure 2.2 to ca calculate the time for the sound to travel from A to B. So method is very simple. You see, from this is that the sound started. And this is here when the sound started at the B. So uh, one, two, three, 
four, five. So there are five divisions uh, between the, uh, the, the sound at A and the sound at B. And each division represents 0 0.5 millisecond. So the total time will be five multiply 0 0.5 milliseconds. Let me show you how I have done this. Okay, so here we go. So there are five divisions, so five multiply 0 0.5 milliseconds, so it will be 2.5 millisecond. The, the next question, B part. The student uses an old meter rule to find the distance between A and B. Figure 2.3 shows the position of A and of B on the meter rule. The distance of 82 uh, centimeter apart suggests a reason why the student did not place microphone A at the 0, 0.0 centimeter mark on this meter rule. You see, the reason is he is using an old meter rule. He said here, an old meter rule. And normally in old meter rules, you see the edges, the edges, they are worn out. So instead of starting mining from 0, 0, 0, he started from the 10 because the edges here, they are rubbed off. They are with the, with the weathering or by the use again and again. The edges are broken normally. So let me show you what I have written. Okay, so edges of the meter rule might have rubbed away. That's the answer. Okay. He says, use the equation. V is equals to distance traveled divided by time taken to calculate the speed V of the sound. Okay. So the distance traveled, uh, we have just shown the distance traveled. That is 2.5, the time taken is 2.5 milliseconds. The distance traveled is 82, 82. So uh, the distance traveled is 82 centimeters. And if you, you wonder how I know that, from 92 minus 10 centimeter, you got 82 centimeter. And then if you convert the 82 centimeter into meters, it will be 0 0.82 meter. And the time taken is 2.5 millisecond and 2.5 millisecond mean 2.5 X per minus three seconds. So in on your calculator, enter 0 0.82 divided 2.5 X per minus three equals two. And that will give you 328 meter per second, 328 meter per second. The D part, Then we have the D part, he says, suggests one way in which the student can obtain a more accurate value for V using the same apparatus. One way of you doing this is uh, move the microphones away from each other, increase the distance between the microphone A and microphone B, and obviously your results will improve. So let me show you my answer. And I think, uh, yeah, here we go. He says, increase the distance between A and B. So very simple answer. Okay. So let's check the marking scheme. We have the marking scheme for question number two. Now the marking scheme for the question number two is showing up on your screen. You can pause the video and stop this video, pause this video, and take your time with this marking scheme. Reach each and every, as, uh, every step of the marking scheme of the question number two. It's very, very important. Okay, so we are going to the next question. He says, a student investigates the upward force on a cylinder placed in water. He attaches the cylinder to the end of a Newton meter before it is placed in water as shown in the figure 3.1.
You see, uh, it has not emerged in the water. It has not touched the water. What is the reading on the meter rule? It's 5.1, 5 5.2, 5 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the reading is 5.9 Newton. State the weight of the cylinder before it is placed in water. That is 5.9 Newton. 5.9 Newton. The student lowers the cylinder into the beaker of water until it is fully immersed. The Newton, uh, the new reading is shown. Now the reading is 5.2 Newton. Now the reading is 5.2. You state the new reading shown in the figure 3.2. It will be 5.2 Newton. Then the question is calculate the upward force on the cylinder due to the water. The upward uh, upward force on the cylinder due to the water will be the and the weight uh, with uh, when the when the cylinder is outside the water and the weight when the cylinder is fully immersed. You subtract them from each other. And whatever will be the difference between these weights, uh, that will be the upward force uh, acting on the cylinder by the water. Okay, so let me show you my work. Okay. So the reading here is 5.9. The reading here is 5.2. And the upward force will be 5.9 minus 5.2, and that will be 0 0.7. The cylinder is shown in the figure. Uh, this cylinder is shown in the figure 3.3. The height h of the cylinder is 6.5 centimeter and the diameter is 3.8 centimeter. Calculate the volume V of the cylinder using the equation. So here we have equation is given V is equal to pi d square h divided by 4. So we have to calculate the volume. The formula is given, and you just have to enter the values. And the answer is in centimeter cubes. OK. So let me show you. So the formula is pi d square h divided by 4. The pi, value, pi is pi. The d value, the diameter, is 3.8 square. And multiply with the 6.5. That's the, that's the height. and divided by 4. So pi multiply 3.8 square, multiply 6.5 divided by 4 and equals to, and the reading will be 73.7 centimeter cube, which is approximately 74, 74 centimeter cube. Okay. He says the diameter D is measured with a ruler. Describe how this is done accurately. You may draw a diagram if you wish. Okay. Okay, um, the diameter D is measured with a ruler. Describe how this is done accurately. You may draw a diagram if you wish. I have shown here in the diagram one of method of measuring the diameter. Uh, we have put two uh, wooden uh, wooden blocks around the that cylinder, and we have placed a, along with these wooden blocks a ruler. And the distance between these wooden blocks will be equal to the diameter of that uh, cylinder. And then you can uh, put the, uh, you know, the cylinder in different, uh, by rotating the cylinder a little bit, and then again and again taking the diameters, and then you can take the average of the diameters. You can do another thing you can use uh, set square. Instead of using these uh, wooden blocks, you can use set squares, which are in your, in, your, uh, in, your, in your geometry box. So put the one set square here, one set square here, one set square should be placed here, and their 90 angle should be here and here. 
and then put a scale like this and measure what is the diameter. Another way of doing this can be that by using the scale measure from the top of the, of the cylinder, from different locations, take the diameter and then take the average. Okay, so the answer we have written is measure diameter of cylinder from different locations and take average. So that is how you can measure the diameter more accurately, okay? So then the question is, let me show you. Uh, the question is, that was one mark question. He says, theory suggests that upward force on the cylinder is given by the upward force is equals to V rho G. V G rho, where G is 10 Newton per kg and the rho is 0 0.00, 0 0.0010 kg per centimeter cube. So use your value of the V from the C first part. If you look at your paper, C first part, the value of the V is 73.7 centimeter cube, or you can say 74 centimeter cube. And just put that value here. So let me show you my answer. I have written this value. Okay, so here we go. So uh, the value of the V, I will enter here. The upward force will be equals to V G rho, 73.7 uh, centimeter cube into 10 uh, Newton per kg and into 0 0.0010 kg per centimeter cube. So your final answer will be 0 0.737 which is 0 0.74 Newton. So the upward force, according to the theoretical thing, is 0 0.74 centimeter, 7, 7, 0 0.74 meter, uh, Newton, sorry. State whether the value of the upward force determined in the B first part, uh, B second part supports the theory. Give a reason for your uh, answer. The answer uh, in that part, B second, uh, B third, second part. The B second part was 0 0.7 Newton. And according to this formula, the reading is 0 0.74 Newton. State whether the value of the upward force determined in the B second part supports the theory. Give a reason for your answer. Yes, uh, difference is very small. The difference between the, the, the actual value and the theoretical value is very small. It is within 10%. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the, the difference between this and that, that value is 0 0.7, this value is 0 0.74. And an important thing is that the Newton meter, this one is 0 0.74 theoretically, when you actually measured it, it was 0 0.7 Newton, but the Newton meter cannot go more than this. Okay, uh, the Newton meter cannot be more accurate than 0 0.7, okay. So uh, we are going to the next question. And, uh, but before go to this question, uh, let us check the marking scheme. The, we are done with the question number three. And on your screen, the marking scheme of the question number three is showing up. You can uh, check your answers. You can check the answers you have written. Uh, the theory questions, you can write and uh, check the, your answer. It's very, very important to compare your answers with the marking scheme. Okay, so um, um, let's go to the next question. The next question is question number four. And the question number four is coming up on your screen. He says, um, a student uh, does an investigation to find out whether cotton wool or bubble wrap is the better insulator. She is provided with the following apparatus, a 100 centimeter cube glass beaker, a supply of a hot water, a rectangular piece of cotton wool, a rectangular piece of bubble wrap, adhesive tape, and state two further pieces of apparatus that are needed for the investigation. Uh, because we will cool them down in our experiment. So we need a thermometer and we need a stopwatch. We need a thermometer and we need a stopwatch. Let me show you my answer. Okay. So state for the two pieces of apparatus that are needed for the investigation, thermometer and the stopwatch. Okay. So... The next question is, he says, uh, that was a two mark question. 
that this one is described in detail how the student does the investigation, state any measurements that need to be taken, explain how she decides which is a better insulator. It's a three mark question. So let me show you my answer. Okay. So see, before we read this answer, uh, what they will do, they will pour hot, they will take the wool and they will wrap the wool uh, with the help of adhesive tape around that beaker and they will fill the beaker and they will put a thermometer in it. They will note down what is the initial temperature of this hot water and they will start the stopwatch and for 10 minutes, they will let it cool. And after 10 minutes, they will check what is the final temperature. So from, uh, from the final temperature, they will minus the initial temperature and that will tell them that in 10 minutes, for example, you did this for 10 minutes, how much is the temperature drop? And then they will uh, use the same beaker and they will wrap, they will uh, wrap uh, uh, bubble sheet around it with the adhesive tape and they will again fill that beaker with the hot water. And they, they will note down what's the initial temperature of this hot water. And then they will let it cool down for 10 minutes with that help of the stopwatch. They will measure the time and what they will do, they will note down initial temperature. And then after 10 minutes, they will note the final temperature and they will check what is the temperature drop. So uh, temperature drop when the wool was, uh, cotton wool was uh, wrapped around the beaker and the temperature drop when the bubble sheet was wrapped around the beaker. So they will note down the one in which the temperature drop will be smallest or least or less than the other, that will be the better insulator. So let me read my answer. I know, uh, wrap around beaker with cotton wool uh, with help of adhesive tape, pour hot water, note initial temperature, note final temperature after 10 minutes. Then repeat same procedure by wrapping bubble wrap around the beaker. One in which a temperature drop is least is in 10 minutes is better insulator. So temperature drop, one thing I think I missed here is temperature drop will be equals to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So the temperature drop will be initial temperature minus the final because here the initial temperature will be higher. Okay, so that is question number four B and its first part. So this is that, this was a three mark question. Now the last part is explain how the student makes a fair comparison between the cotton wool and the bubble wrap. You see the temperature of the surrounding should remain same uh, for both the experiments and uh, the volume of the hot water should be same in both the, uh, both the experiments. And uh, let me show you my answer. I've written this is answer. Okay, initial temperature same, volume of the water should be same. The initial temperature of the hot water in both of the cases should be same. And the same volume of water should be used in hot water should be used in both the experiments. Then there will be a fair comparison. So uh, let's, let's check the marking scheme of this question. That's question number four. And now my dear students, uh, the marking scheme is showing up on your screen. You can stop the video, you can pause the video, and you can take time to read this marking scheme. It is very, very important to read the, the, the marking scheme and check your answers, compare them with the marking. It's a very, very important thing. So by this question, we have reached the end of this paper. Today, me and my dear students, we have done May, June 2019, Physics 5054, paper 4.1. Uh, this was a, an alternative to practical paper. We call it ATP paper. And this paper was from zone one. We call it paper four. So uh, I hope that uh, uh, this, um, um, this video will help you to learn about the ATP paper. If you think that this video is helpful to you and you have gained some knowledge from this video, 
don't forget to subscribe my channel and suggest this the link of this video with your with your class fellows with your uh, seniors and juniors in o levels so uh, it was a great pleasure for me to teach you online so thank you very much uh, and special thanks uh, uh, to you for watching my video thank you very much once again and have a good day and god bless you all